presentation, we're going to look at some of the improvements that have been made to the animation workflow inside of Maya 2013. A number of enhancements have been made to the Human IK feature set to allow animators to easily take advantage of the powerful bipedal character rigging and animating tools. The ability to map and retarget Human IK animation to and from custom rigs has been added. The character views have also been further refined to allow you to customize them to fit a specific need or requirement. So what we want to do in this example is take this custom rig here that you can see that I have, which is just a pretty basic rig. We've got some IK driving certain parts. We've got some FK driving other parts. We want to use this custom rig to animate this character, but I want to get some motion capture data onto it. And the human IK system now has the ability to work not only with the original control rig, but now with custom rigs. So it gives us a great mechanism for repurposing already existing animation data onto these custom rigs. When working with Human IK, the process is always the same. You start off by teaching the solver about the hierarchy of the skeleton, and we do that through a process of character definition. So all you have to do is simply match the corresponding bone in the characterization tool to the same bone in the Maya viewport. Once you get all of these bones populated, Human IK has enough information to begin working with that skeleton at a very high level. To accelerate this process, I'm just going to simply use a naming template. Notice that we have templates for HIK, as well as templates for cat and biped. For this example, we'll use this custom template for the girl. So once that's done, we can lock it off, and now the skeleton is ready to begin working with Human IK. Human IK is going to solve this skeleton, but it needs to put that animation data somewhere. It could either be the control rig, which came in Maya previously, which is Human IK's built-in FKIK solution, or now we have the ability to have that information put directly onto custom rigs. So there's a little bit more work involved with setting up a custom rig, but it's not that hard to do. So let's go ahead and walk you through that. All we have to do is start populating these end marker fields with the corresponding end effectors in our custom rig. This is all user definable through an XML file, so if you needed more markers or less markers or you wanted to be in different positions or have a different background image, it's all easy to do and it's procedurally generated. So you just put the end anchor point and the FK bones draw in between those end anchor points automatically. So again, it's a really simple process. We'll just grab um, something like that hand and we'll apply it to this end effector. Notice that it maps both the translation and the rotation for that hand. If we jump into the spine joints here, you'll see that it was smart enough to know, based on what we set up in that original skeleton definition, how many spine joints I might have. So I can just simply grab that uh, spine joint, right mouse click on top of that, and add it to that effector. And you can see that it was smart enough to know that that's going to be an FK bone. So you can go through the process of filling in as many of these tabs as you need to have your character get dragged around by that human IK solver. So in this example, I'm just going to accelerate that process again by using a simple XML file that I previously wrote out. So with that done, we now have everything that we need to begin retargeting information using human IK onto this custom rig. We've defined the skeleton and we've defined the custom rig. So let's get some animation source. We'll jump over to our visor and we'll just go to the motion capture examples. And it's awesome, these motion capture examples now come through Characterize. So that same process that we went through teaching Human IK about the hierarchy of this girl skeleton has already been done on the motion capture examples that ship with Side of Maya. So if we scrub through this, obviously it's just a simple little cartwheel. And this is a great example because we're dealing with drastically different sizes of limbs and both the hand and the feet need to come in contact with specific things like the floor. So now what we want to do is have this girl's custom rig get driven by that motion capture data through the magic of human IK. And all we have to do to do that is change the source. As soon as I change that source, what human IK is trying to do by default is match join angle. So if we kind of pull this across here and we scrub through this, matching joint angle is great except for the fact that my girl's limbs are different lengths. So the feet will automatically stick. It's going to do that compensation, action space compensation automatically, but it doesn't know what to do with those arms. So this is really where we need to start making some creative decisions about how we're going to deal with this retargeting. And this is where the power of human IK really starts to shine. For any of these end, uh, basically what's happening is human IK is solving for the skeleton and then it's reverse engineering that information to make those end markers or those custom rate controls get to the position to come up with the same solve. It's a lot of magic that happens underneath the hood but that's basically what's going on. At any given time for any of these markers, let's go to our character controls window, during the retargeting process we can say we're not as concerned about matching joint angle, we're more concerned about trying to match the corresponding or the same world position. Now I mentioned before that this was all customizable, so let's just go ahead and load up a new custom UI. We'll go to the edit, load UI configuration, and we'll just bring up the girl. All right, so now that we've got that done, let's go ahead and start to 
play around with some of these end markers and the overall goal they're trying to achieve. So when that hand starts to come down to the ground right there, this, this limb, let's just slide this character across here a little bit more. I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what, as it starts to come down to the ground, let's grab this end handle and let's have it try to match translation. Now notice that what happens is, as I tell it to match the world position of that other marker, it essentially stops at the shoulder length. But if I start to go and give it a little bit of pull, it uses that human IK solver to transfer that energy through the hierarchy of that skeleton. So even though it's a custom rig, we still have this full human IK solver that we're reverse engineering to get to that end result. And that custom rig, when we bake the information out, will replicate that to the T. It's really quite, quite amazing. So we could do the same thing for this other hand over here. We maybe will have it match world position a little bit better. So now as our guy kind of comes down to the ground, you can see that we're solving much better than we were before. Now another thing that the human IK system has is it has a really nice ground plane um, mechanism. So we can go in here and edit the definition for the properties for this and tell it to turn on floor contacts for both hands and the floor contacts for both. The, actually, let's, let's turn that off real fast. Let's go and scrub through where those hands are kind of passing through the ground and you'll see as soon as I turn that on, boop, those hands get pushed up. Now obviously if I wanted to adjust the overall height of those hands, I can do that by simply giving a little bit more bias there. And we'll do the same thing for the feet here. So that really is the power of the human IK system, the ability to transfer that energy past the body part, get that in position to match, tell it that we're concerned about matching FK joints in certain areas, more concerned about matching world position in other areas, and all we have to do is take this information and then bake it back onto that control rig. So if we just say edit, bake to custom rig, just like that, we've now got a solve. You can see now that we're no longer seeing that human IK solver and there goes our girl colliding with the ground and doing all that magic. So those are a few of the things that have been improved with human IK when working with this character. So the next thing that we want to do, we can get rid of the display of the joints here, is we want to look at a couple of enhancements that have been made to the graph editor. So let's just go ahead and grab our node of all of our custom rigs here. Let's actually grab it one level down and jump into the graph editor. So the graph editor has some nice enhancements that have been made to it. If we expand this out and we see all of our function curves inside of here, if I wanted to do a retiming of this, we now have this really great new retiming tool directly inside of the graph editor. And it works the same way as it does inside of Motion Builder, inside of Maya, inside of Max, inside of Soft. This is one of those suites initiatives that we have at Autodesk to try to get consistent function curve editors. And this new retiming tool is an example of a tool that's across many of the products inside of our suite. So if I wanted to slow down the kick swing of this part, all I have to do is go in here and grab this. It says double click to add multiple retiming markers. So if I double click in an area, I can simply add a couple of retiming markers that I could then use to position this or rescale that. If I continue to add these, I can add as many of these as I want. So it's a very powerful tool for dealing with retiming of animation data. And then obviously if I want to get rid of them, I can just X them off. So it's a great new tool inside of Maya. It's also inside of Motion Builder, Soft Image, and Max. So it's one of those awesome suites initiatives. So those are a few of the improvements that have been made to the animation workflow inside of Maya. We now have the ability to retarget human IK solves onto custom rigs, and as well as a couple of little enhancements that have been made to the graph editor that again are across the suite of products inside of Autodesk Entertainment family.